Hi, my name is Peter Matavish, and welcome back to another DGD tutorial. In this question, we're going to do an ordinary level question. We're going to do an assemblies question. So this is the 2014 assemblies question, question C5. So as always, read through the questions, see what they're giving you, and see where to start. So details of a hitch mechanism for a toy tractor and trailer, as shown on the right, are given in figure C5 below. A parts list and a 3D graphic of the parts are also given. Draw the elevation of the assembled hatch, uh, hitch mechanism. In brackets, then it says any omitted dimensions uh, may be estimated. So any omitted dimensions. If they're not in it, you can't find them, you can estimate them. Scale is 1 is to 1. So there's no need to bother with a scale looking at this. And an important part of this is at the very bottom you'll see a 3D graphic of the parts. Okay, It gives you a good hint as to how they're going to line up and also uh, a parts list. So part one is your tractor bracket, part two is the trailer hitch, and part three is the connecting rod. Okay. Now in assemblies, you look at the questions and you figure out from the measurements where everything's gonna go. And it's said to draw an elevation. So we're gonna start off part one is giving you, they're giving you elevation plan of part one. So if we start off the elevation of part one, and we keep it over to the left hand side of the page, we should be enough room for everything else. Okay, so start over on the left-hand side here. Now, past couple of videos, I've zoomed in and I've lost a lot of the drawing. So I'm going to keep zoomed out on this one, and hopefully you'll be able to pick up on everything. Now, the height of the assembly or the height of that part one is 94 mil. So measure up 94. So we have 94 mil. Draw that across. Okay, and the lengths then we have, we have 8 mil, 12 mil, 28 and 30. So 8 mil. Uh, 12 mil. 28. And you have 30. And draw those all straight up. Okay, now heights wise, so we're going to put in a center line. So half that 94. So we have 47. And draw in a center line. And it's off that center line we're going to go with our um, measurements. Now I might zoom in and see how we look. How it looks. Okay, so there's our center line, and our gaps are 14 mil, 38, and 62. So if we go seven either side for 14, and do the same with the other one. So half the 38, half the 62. So. Um, 19 and 31 okay and draw them across slightly Now that's mostly everything put in for the elevation of part one. We can start marking in a few of our points. Right. That is basically the points of it. We can put it in strong now in a sec. But first thing we're going to do before we do that is we're going to put in the hole. So you have a diameter eight hole at the top here and at the bottom and you have a diameter, six, a diameter 16 hole going through the center. So if we put in diameter 16 hole first, the center of it is on the 30 line here and is going right down to the top. So it's diameter 16, that means we're gonna go eight mil on either side. And 
it is going down to the end of the 14 here and the end of the 38 I should say and we have our diameter 8 hole up here so we need to find the centers for that so the centers for it will be down 8 from the top and up 8 from the bottom up 8 mil that's the center for that hole and down 8 mil here that's the center for that hole now there are the centers and it's diameter 8 then measure up 4 mil either side of those lines to give you the edges of the holes Now, the assembly of this, so if you look at the other parts, this is the elevation of part one done. And we have diameter 16 hole here, and if you look at part two, there is a diameter 16 hole on that, so it's gonna have to line up inside here. It's also 14 mil thick, so it will line up with the 14 mil gap there. Then you have the part number three, and that pin is diameter 16. So that diameter 16 is gonna sit down through that hole as well. And there's nothing else that can go into that or sit over that drawing. So we can put that drawing in strong. So draw the rest of that in strong now. Okay, so that's just for the shade to uh, highlight that that's part one. Now if you're looking at the assemblies of it and we want to draw in part two, everything has, it's assemblies because everything has to be assembled. So part two, the top part of it is 40 mil thick and we have to have a 40 mil slot here. There's also a damper 16 hole going through the entire part there. So what we do is we use this hole in part one as a reference for part two. So the center of the hole here, all right, that center line we have there, is going to be the same center for the size 16 hole on part number two and the distance over from the center to the end of part two is 15 mil so if we measure over 15 millimeters this line here is the starting edge of part number two so it is 15 mil from there to the center then from that center we have 45 mil, 40 mil and 90 mil. So we can mark all those in now. We're going to continue out this gap just so we have something to write our measurements on. So from the center we measure out 45 mil, then 40 mil, and then 90. All right. Now we can draw that other 40 mil gap out for a bit. The distance down from the top line then to the top line at the base is 40. So from our 45, let's draw that straight down. This is our 45 mark here. Draw that straight down. Measure down 40 millimeters. That's 40 mil. And draw that across slightly. Bring down your 90 and bring down the 40 there. So that's marking in a few of our points. It remains the same all the way along. So that 14 mil gap, it'll also be down here then on the right hand side. So measure down 14 mil to find the thickness of the base. That's 14 mil. Draw that across lightly. Now the thickness remains the same, so if I join my angle here from that 45 down to the 40, this angle here, if we project that off parallel to that line there and the thickness is 40 mil, so if we measure down 40 mil perpendicular to that edge and put in the same angle again, 
it will show us where the bottom here is stopping and also where the bottom there is stopping. So draw a line off from that edge perpendicular to it. Measure a 14 mil. And then use your two set squares to copy the angle of that slope you had there, so the over 45 and down 40. Or sorry, over 40, down 40. Actually, that should be, that should be 45 degrees, shouldn't it? Yep, 45 degrees, roughly. So that's 14 there. If I draw 45 degrees down, that should show me. So the thickness remains the same. That's your 14 mil there. So the 14 mil gap comes out as far as here and goes down as far as there. Now we're almost done with that. All we need to put in now is the two diameter 8 holes. So if it says 2 by diameter 8, then it means both of them are diameter 8. And we have measurements there for our centers. We're coming in 15 millimeters. That's the first center, and then 30. And they are center lines. And if it's down to 8, then you go 4 mil either side. And that gives you those holes going on through it. Now again, double check to see if you can draw it in strong. The last part, part number 3, is actually going over here. We know that much. So. There is nothing else to be drawn with that other than to draw it in strong. So draw part two in strong. Okay, so another bit of shading there just to show that that is part two. Last part now is part number three, which is your connecting pin. And part three, the base of it is diameter 16. So that's a diameter 16 hole. So it's gonna fit down through there. And it's a pin, so you don't wanna stay in, in. And it's based on a hexagon at the top. So you want to put that hexagon sitting at the top here. So we have our center line. And if the hexagon is starting here, the distance down is 58, so we can measure down 58 millimeters. Extend down, down to 16 mil, and measure down 58 mil. Extend down 16 on the left hand side, and that is the 58. Okay, so that's how far down it goes. Next now is our hexagon here, so extend up, essentially extend it up there, and it is based on a diameter 40 circle. So if it's diameter 40, it means it is radius 20. It's touching off here, so we just go up 20 mil. That'll give you the center of the circle. And you can put in your radius 20. So if the angle is going to be 60 degrees, we can, they're tangent to the circle, so you could almost assume that it's just put in tangentially there, I guess. But what you're going to do is you're going to basically like divide it up 30, 60, but you, if its angle of the line is 60 degrees, then the normal to it will be 30 degrees. So if we draw 30 degree lines through the center, all right, for top left and top right, same thing down there, we'll actually find the point of contact. So now we can do our tangent up to the center. That's our 60 degrees. Do the same on the far side. Just you need to bring across the top line. Forgot about that. So bring the center straight up and bring the point across. Now we can put in our 60 degrees this side as well. They know for sure they're going to line up. So you're inscribing a circle inside a hexagon. So you needed that point of contact where they met. And then that is the elevation of the hexagon done as well as the connecting pin. So that can now go on strong. So 
So that is the question done. That's the assembly of all three parts done. The pane continues down through the holes here, but it's hidden detail in part uh, one and in part two, and it's in line with it, so it's all going to be hidden detail there. And that is the question done. So I hope that helped. If it did, please leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to see more DCG tutorials. Okay, thank you, and good luck.